Good afternoon guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan, this is Auto Detour, and today we're gonna to be installing this Chamberlain wall mount garage door opener. Now, I currently do have a garage door opener, but it's an overhead opener, and we need to get as much space as possible above the truck, because we're going to be installing a two post lift in my garage stall here. And since my ceiling height is only nine feet, nine inches, or nine foot 10, I think. The garage door opener obviously is in the way along with that light there and the LED lights over here. Now, if I was planning ahead, we built our house about six years ago. I would have pre-wired it thinking, you know, someday I'll have a lift, uh, but I did not. So my garage was pre-wired for the sensors, but unfortunately they all run up to the head unit up here. And this one is going up here. So I think I have an idea for the, you know, the trip sensors down below. The wire that runs to the button over there by the door into the house uh, is going to be a bit of a challenge. So we're going to have to play with that one a little bit, see what we can do to get up into the ceiling and reroute it from there over to here. I plan to keep as much wire uh, behind the sheetrock as possible because I would like to finish out the sheetrock at some point in the garage and get it painted and have it look nice and I don't want a bunch of wires run across the surface. Now, other than cost, I don't really know why they don't do this in more garages. Uh, it is a slightly more expensive unit. The Just having a clean ceiling, even if you're not doing a lift in your garage, having a clear ceiling, I mean, you could put more storage up there. You know, just getting that head unit off the ceiling and over here on the wall is just a much cleaner install. So. If you guys are looking at doing this yourself, I will put a link to this unit that I got on Amazon in the description down below. And uh, let's get to installing it. All right guys, so here's everything that came in the box. The first thing that sticks out to me is how small this side unit is. Uh, I was expecting it to be quite a bit bigger than that. So I'd say it's about oh, maybe five or six inches wide and probably about a uh, 15, 16 inches tall. So uh, you can mount it to either side of the garage door. It's got an output shaft on both sides. Um, but quickly what came in the box is we got a box of hardware here. We got a, the mounting bracket. We have some staples for stapling the wires to the wall. Uh, which hopefully we won't have to use hardly any of those. Uh, we got the emergency pull cord, so you still have a pull cord. Uh, instead of it hanging in the middle of your garage, it'll hang uh, off your unit over here. So you can still disengage it if you need to open it. Of course, the remote, we have the master button for the wall over by the door out to the garage. Here's that internet gateway if you want to run it using the app on the phone. This is a cable tension sensor. That's if something gets in the way of the garage door, it senses if there's slack in the cable and it'll run the garage door back up. So nice safety feature there. And this is cool. This is kind of added safety additional to what I already have on the door. Uh, this will mount to the rail here on the outside. And it's got a post in it here that automatically clicks out and gets in the way of one of the wheels in the track. Uh, added safety feature to keep someone from being able to lift your garage door. Uh, so every time you run the garage door, that, that little solenoid will pop in or out depending if you're opening or closing it. We got a couple of brackets for the optical sensors here and a bunch of wiring. We may have to use some of that. This is the coupler that couples the shaft on the side to the shaft on the garage door. Uh, obviously the main unit here we've got some warning labels uh, telling you not to take a nap under your garage door when you're closing it and we have what's really cool is you don't lose your ability to have an overhead light uh, so this one's actually wireless you can plug it into any outlet in the garage uh, so, I mean technically you're supposed to mount it on the ceiling so we can mount it over the side so it's not in the way um, and you'll still have a light that turns on in the garage when you open and close the garage door. So that's everything that came in the box. Let's get it mounted up uh, and start chasing some wires. So in the directions, the first thing it tells you to do is remove the old garage door opener and all the hardware. 
I am not going to do that. I'm just going to disengage it because if for whatever reason we get to installing this and it doesn't work or uh, we have an issue with any of the hardware, I don't want to be without a garage door opener uh, while we get it replaced. Okay, so we're up here at the old opener. The first thing we're going to work on is the sensors. So as of right now, they have a common for the garage door opener on the wall, the push button, and the beams. So the beams go in here. Um, obviously, we're going to unhook the garage door opener and hopefully pull this back and route it over there. Uh, that's going to be the hard one. So the easy one is going to be the beams. So the beams um, are these two wires and we're just going to take them off these terminals. We're going to wire nut them together so that it is one continuous wire going from this beam over here through the ceiling into this beam over here. Then we'll cut into the wall and grab the wire that's coming down the stud space to the sensor on this side over here. Uh, and I'll show you this in a little bit. We'll cut it so that we have, it essentially then becomes one wire going down to that sensor and one wire going up through the ceiling to this sensor over here. And that way we can wire it up to that opener over there. And OSHA guidelines state that when replacing a garage door opener, you should be working in sandals and if at all possible while sitting on the roof of your truck. All right, so now I got the two sensor wires wire nutted together. And so red to red, white to white. So now basically I have one continuous wire running from that sensor over to that sensor. I disconnected the wires going over to the push button on the wall over there. Uh, in hopes that we're going to be able to put a hole in the ceiling right over there, find this wire, pull it up, and we'll probably have to use some of that extra wire that came with the sensors to fish it down that stud space over there to the opener. All right, so next thing we want to do is find the wire that's coming down to this sensor down here, and it's got to be in this stud space somewhere right here. Ugh, got spider webs. But planning ahead a little bit, I want the wires to come out behind the head unit uh, for a cleaner install. So they'll come out uh, behind it and we'll run it into the head unit so they're not going across the wall anywhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this, the head unit, set it up into position here, mark the bottom of where the opener stops and kind of where it lines up on the wall so that I can cut the hole directly behind it to one, search for the wire in the wall, and then two, have the wires come out there uh, to connect to the opener. And to do that, I'm going to be using this four inch hole saw here. Uh, I like using hole saws because cutting a hole makes a puck in the sheetrock that I can easily uh, put a board behind and screw back into place and patch over. Okay, so I've, I've just hung the opener on the shaft. Give me an idea where it's going to mount. What's really cool about these is the shaft is what supports the weight of the opener. So you don't have to have any brackets behind it mounted to the wall. We're just gonna attach one bracket to the side here, but that's the only thing that just keeps the opener from rotating. So I know I want the, the hole in the wall to be up, kind of up in this area where my hand's at so that I can run the wires uh, into the bottom of the opener. There is a hole behind here to go into the panel right here. <laughs> So, and of course, because we're on an exterior wall here, we will have a vapor barrier and some insulation here. Um, I figured it was gonna be tacked to either this stud or this stud. So I kinda, it was, I drilled it large enough that I could fit my hand in here. Um, then I already went ahead and put a small hole in the vapor barrier back here so that I could reach through. And I do feel the wire. And there's our sensor wire right there. So we'll splice into that guy uh, so that we can get it hooked up to the head unit. So we basically cut the wire in the wall, stripped it, and now I have two pigtails coming off. This one goes over to the sensor through the ceiling uh, over there. And then this bottom one now has got a pigtail on it. This is the one that goes to the sensor right down here. So that's all set. Uh, now we have our pigtails for our sensors ready to be installed in the head unit. Now next thing we're going to do is try to fish a wire for the button on the wall over there. 
So we'll probably use our hole saw again. Uh, this wire probably runs directly across the ceiling over there. And then this stud space is open right here. So we'll probably use our hole saw, punch right up through here, see if we can't snag that wire, pull it up from there. Looks like we'll need some more wire, but we'll try to fish it down through that hole over there. So I would love to tell you that we found it first try in that hole, but we definitely did not. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes later, <laughs> still have not found the wire for the garage door opener. So instead, what we're gonna do, I got my helpers out here. Benny, say hi. 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 Stella. Hi. And Cade. They're gonna help me. We're just gonna connect to the end of this wire because we know that one's hooked up all the way over there. And we're just gonna run it back up through that hole, to 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 that hole, <laughs> and over to that hole. So not really the way I was hoping to do it, but now that we have eight holes in the ceiling, might as well. So let's get to fishing. Okay, finally, after quite a bit of work, uh, we finally have our switch wire running out with our sensor wires uh, and those will all be running out behind the opener i had to drill more holes in the ceiling so we got a couple up here you can see uh, to get past the header i kind of just drilled a hole through the sheetrock this way and this way so i didn't have to try to get up and through the the header on the wall here then we had to do a couple more holes this way there of course was some random board here it kept me from uh, fishing it through there, so I had to drill an extra hole there. Okay, so we're going to be doing things a little bit backwards from what the directions say. I'm going to go ahead and mount up the cable tension monitor and the automatic door latch. Uh, just because I want those wires to be run behind the unit. I seem to be ultra obsessed with hiding the wires. <laughs> we're going to make use of that hole we have on the wall up there to run the wires out through that. So everything's hidden behind the unit here before we get it up and into place. All right, so now before I mount the cable tension monitor, it has to be up higher than this header to be able to clear the garage door when it opens. So I went ahead and mounted this scrap of two by six I had sitting around. It also shims it out because we have this thickness we have to adjust for, and they want the mounting surface to be about three quarters of an inch from the cable. And we're, and they say approximately, and we're, we're pretty close. Um, so that should work pretty good. Let's get that guy mounted. Alright, for the door latch, normally this would be super annoying for me, but these the holes on the door latch actually line up perfectly with this hole and this hole, which will put it in there slightly cockeyed, but I can use the existing holes. I would have been struggling with trying to drill a hole right next to one of these to get it straight. So we're just gonna use those two, and if it doesn't work out, we can move it somewhere else, but let's get that guy mounted up. Alrighty, so we got that guy on there. Now the pin will jump in and out automatically when the door opens and closes. Now we just have to run this. This is our last wire. We just have to run up to the rest of the wires we have pulled here, uh, and then we'll be ready to mount the head unit. All right, so I got the wire run up the wall. Had to drill another, <laughs> just drill another hole in the wall to hide it in there, because I mean, what's one more at this point? Uh, so it's running up the wall, coming out that hole. We put that plate back on that hole, so we should be all set. Uh, to get the head unit put up here now because all the wiring's there that we need we should be good to go So I've already tightened the collar on here uh, I did that so that we could hang the garage door opener up there and see where to drill the hole But now we got to put the mounting bracket on here, and we're just gonna Attach it loosely. We don't know how far away from the wall the garage door opener is gonna be before we attach the opener to the wall All right, there we go. 
The head unit is mounted and tightened to the torsion bar. Hooked up the emergency release here that hooks to the cable right on the bottom of the head unit. Now we're gonna open up the front, hook up all the wires. I won't bore you with all my nerding out about hiding wires and all that stuff. Not that we, not that we haven't been doing that already. And then we'll get the switch mounted to the wall. And if everything works out good, we'll rip this ceiling unit off the wall and we'll be ready to mount that two post lift in the garage. I am so excited about that. There we go. Got everything wired up. Once I get this extra long one kind of coiled up behind, I should be able to wrap all these up real nicely, not have anything showing. But everything looks nice and neat in there. So we'll shut the lid. And we're gonna go over and put the button on the wall over there. Last thing we gotta do here is mount the remote light. This has a couple of brackets that we gotta install here. One on each side to hold the lens on. These things just slide right in here like this. And we got a couple of screws to mount them into place. Then we gotta go mount it on a wall somewhere near an outlet. I'm not quite sure where I wanna mount this thing yet. Uh, I do have the outlet up there for the garage door opener that I can use, but I have to mount it somewhere not right above the vehicle for the lift, because obviously that would uh, defeat the whole purpose of clearing the ceiling. We can see how the far the cord extends it this way, and kind of put it near the end of this HVAC run. Also considering putting it up over here over my workbench. Yeah, let's put it up here on the ceiling, see how close we can get it, how far we can get it up here don't love the idea of the having the cord stretch all the way across the ceiling but obviously if i don't like it it is wireless so i can move it anywhere else in the garage so let's let's punch it up here right now and be done with it Auto. Did we do it? We did it. All right, the garage door is done. I just finished setting the limits, the up and down limits. Stella is gonna do the honors to test it out for us. So Stella, can you push the big button on the remote, please? So I'm gonna press that one. Watch. Uh... There it goes. Ready? Ching. Ching. <laughs> so and then all this is gonna come down. We're gonna move that LED light over. Now we're all set. Once we get this one down, now we're all set to get our two post lift in here, which should be arriving this week, which I'm super excited about. We'll be going to pick that up uh, at my father-in-law's warehouse. They got a loading dock there, so we'll get it picked up, thrown on the trailer, bring it back here, and figure out how to get it off the trailer. Thing weighs like 17, almost 1800 pounds. So Whoa. anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Kind of fun, putting something new in the garage. Um, if you did, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.